Howdy everybody, welcome back to Accounting 1101. I'm Professor Martin coming to you as always from our home office in Wilmington, Ohio. In our video today, we're going to be taking a look at financial statements. We're not going to learn how to do a financial statement just yet, but we're going to be trying to get an idea of what they are and what kind of information is contained in the financial statements. And in doing that, we're kind of Starting at the end, I don't know, when I was a kid and I would read books, uh, I'd grab a book and the first thing I would do is I would always flip to the end and read the last page before I'd start reading the book. That's kind of what we're doing here. We're looking at the end result of all the accounting that we're going to learn how to do. The end result of our accounting is the financial statement. So we're kind of working our way backwards. We're going to learn what the financial statements are. Then we're going to work our way back and learn how to do the accounting behind the financial statement. So what I've got right here, I've got Walmart's annual report. And you can kind of see item number eight in that annual report, financial statement. So what in the world are financial statements? Why are they important? What information is on them? A lot of questions we have to answer today. There are four main financial statements, the four statements of the accounting apocalypse, as it were. The first one we're going to learn about, income statement. We're going to learn about the statement of owner's equity. We're going to learn about the balance sheet. And we're going to learn about the statement of cash flows. Now, these statements are going to be compiled at the end of the accounting period, whether it be annually or quarterly. Uh, those are the required time periods for a publicly traded company that has stock on the market. But a lot of times they're also done monthly for internal purposes. And we also have to prepare our financial statements in a very specific order. In fact, the order that I have them in right here. We prepare the income statement, which allows us to prepare the statement of owner's equity, the balance sheet, and then finally, the statement of cash flows. So let's jump right in. I'm going to show you examples from our textbook. I'm going to show you some real world examples. And hopefully by the time we're done, you have a pretty good idea of what the four financial statements are and the information that you're going to find on them. So here we go. Statement number one. The first one we make is called the income statement. I've got a very simple income statement that you can find in your book for a landscaping company. Every financial statement is going to have the name of the business at the top, the title of the financial statement, and then the date or the time period. For the income statement, we're talking about a period of time. In our example here, we have a month. So we're saying this information is for the month of August for our landscaping company. If we look at that, you can see we've got revenue, we've got expenses, and then down here at the bottom, we got net income. So that's the information that we're getting on the income statement. What kind of profit did we make? In fact, some people call the income statement a P&L, a profit and loss statement. That's the information we're going to get. Did we make a profit? We can see down here, bottom line, we made $250 in net income or profit. Revenue minus expenses is our format. On your income statement, the revenues are always going to be at the beginning. Then your expenses, revenues minus expenses gives me net income. That bottom line is profit. It won't always be positive. Sometimes if we've lost money, we'll have a net loss, all right? That's our income statement right there, $250. We made money, great job at the landscaping company. A few more things we need to point out about the old income statement here. First of all, revenue. I just threw that word out there. I didn't tell you what it meant. You probably have some idea of what revenue means. When we talk accounting and we say revenue, we're talking about the value of goods sold or services provided. So we look at that landscaping income statement. We see total revenue, 1400 Revenue, 1400 What kind of service does a landscaping company provide? Well, they mow grass. Maybe they uh, do gutter cleaning. Maybe they do a planting plant, yard cleanup, whatever. The value of what they provided is revenue. That's what they sold. You think about Walmart. When Walmart has revenue, they're talking about the product they sold off the shelf right? So revenue, value of goods sold or 
services provided. We also got expenses on here. What is that? The cost associated with providing the goods and services. And so we look, we've got tractor repair expense, we've got tractor fuel, we've got insurance. All those were required to be able to provide the services that generated the revenue. So we have revenue minus expenses equals net income. Very simple example. Income statement, P&L statement, profit and loss statement. Uh, you might see it called a statement of operations. Whatever you call it, it's the same game. Revenue minus expenses equals net income. And you, you might look at that and say, ah, oh, that seems too easy. I'm sure a big company like Walmart, it's a lot more convoluted, right? Well, you tell me. Here is Walmart's income statement. Revenue, net sales, those are the products that they sold. Membership and other income, that's revenue from when you join Sam's Club. Or maybe Walmart Plus, whatever kind of different memberships they're selling uh, at Walmart. And add them together, you got total revenue. Well, wait a second. Revenue, total revenue, it's the same thing. They just got one more type of revenue. Net sales, membership revenue. Add them together, total revenue. And then look. Cost of sales, that's basically what they paid for the inventory that they sold. Operating expenses. And you see they've got interest. You can see they got taxes. And then down here at the bottom, they got net income. A few extra lines, but really at the end of the day, revenue minus expenses is net income. Look at it. You've had literally 15 minutes of accounting. And you can already read an income statement. That's pretty wild, right? One other thing to point out here, you'll notice that they also have a line, other gains and losses. So what is going on there? We already know what revenues are. We know what expenses are. What are gains and losses? Well, think of it this way. You go into Walmart and you see all that inventory. And you can pick that inventory up and you can buy it. That's Walmart's core business, right? Their day-to-day -day business is they open the door you go in, you buy something, and you take it with you, and you pay them on the way out the door. So that's what they're in business to do. When they sell that inventory, they count it as revenue, just like you saw in the income statement. But well, let's say Walmart decided there was a store that was kind of underperforming, okay? And they decided to close it down. And now they've got a big empty building that they have sold off. Well, what is that exactly? Well, that's where gains and losses come in. They're selling something, but it's not really their core business to sell real estate and buildings. And so gains are ancillary items, not really their core business, but they've sold something off and they've got more for it than what it's worth on the accounting records. And so they record a gain. Loss is the opposite. They take that building and sell it for less than what they have on the accounting records of value, then it's a loss. And so we have revenue, which is kind of the day-to-day -day transactions that we're in business to do, selling inventory. But then we have gains. Gains are from where we're selling off stuff or maybe doing transactions that aren't really core to our business, but we still got to record them. So you take all that together, we got revenue minus expenses plus our gains minus losses gives us our net income. Look at another few examples here real quick. We got Netflix. Our income statement, you can see we got revenues right here at the top. Netflix has one kind of revenue. You pay them money and they will let you on the platform. You can watch whatever you want to. That's the only kind of revenue they have. $31 billion in revenues in 2022. All the numbers there are in thousand. So we got revenues and then all our expenses, marketing, technology, general, interest, taxes, and then you can see net income. A few more lines again, but at the end of the day, revenue minus expenses equals net income on the income statement. Here's Nike, revenues at the top again, See, we got expenses down through there and net income at the bottom. So to summarize all that, your income statement, 
revenue. You'll see it sometimes called sales, uh, something like that. Fees earned if it's a service business. Plus any gains, minus expenses, minus losses, gives us net income. Number two on the financial statement agenda. Statement of owner's equity. You'll notice I've got that in bold. Owner's equity. It's a little bit redundant because equity literally means ownership, right? You think of your home. You have equity in your home. When you buy your home and maybe you took out a loan with the bank, you owe the bank some money. The amount that you put down, the amount you paid back is the equity in your home. It's the ownership in your home. So it's the statement of owner's ownership, if that makes any sense. The equity just means ownership. Our statement of owner's equity is going to show the amounts that owners have invested into the company. Let's take a look at a little example here. We have a, a fake business here, statement of owner's equity. You can see the owner here is a dude named Chris Clark, and he just started this particular business. He invested 25,000. The company made some money. He took out a couple thousand, and that ending amount is the amount that he has in equity or capital. So a couple of things about that. Our statement of owner's equity is going to show how the owner's claim went up or down during the period. It goes up when the owners invest money. It goes up when the company makes money. It goes down when the owners take out money. I wasn't lying. See, it says it right there. What we have here is a sole proprietor statement of owner's equity. What we're going to focus on mostly in our time together is corporate statement of stockholders equity. So instead of having one owner like we see right here, there's going to be a bunch of owners. We got shareholders out there, a ton of different people owning a piece of the company. So let's take a look and show you what one of those statements looks like. Holy smokes. Look at all the columns. Look at all the numbers. It's really intimidating at first glance right here. But all I just want you to take away from right now, statement of stockholders or shareholders equity. Again, how did the amounts invested by the owners change from one period to the next? And so you can kind of see we have amounts that they've contributed and amounts the company has earned, retained earnings. Add them together, and that's the total equity. Now, the cool thing about the financial statements and the reason we have to prepare them in a certain order is they're all interconnected. One number from one financial statement will flow through to the other financial statement. I said we had to do the income statement first, right? The reason we have to do the income statement first is because we need that net income number. Here's Netflix income statement. Net income. And you can see it flowing right into the statement of shareholders equity. Right on. So our next financial statement, the balance sheet. I got a simple balance sheet here. You see, we got something called assets. We have something called liabilities and something called owner's equity. You can see the amounts right there. We have our title, our company name, the title balance sheet. And then this one, just a date. It says November 30th. You'll notice on the other ones, it was a time period. The balance sheet is just one specific date. Here's what we have asset-wise. Here's what we owe liability-wise. Here's what the owners have contributed as of this date. Maybe different yesterday, maybe different tomorrow, but this is what it is right now on November 30th. So on our balance sheet, what the business owns, that's the assets, right? You have assets in your home. You may have a car. You probably live in a house. Those are your assets. And maybe you have a, a nice stereo. Maybe you have an iPhone. Those would be considered assets, things that you own. We also have who has a claim to the assets of the business. The claims come from either creditors in the form of a liability or owners. So, as I mentioned, a specific point in time, that statement, the balance sheet is going to show what we own and who has a claim to it as of November 30th. Netflix. 
there's their balance sheet. You can see it very similar to what we just looked at, our simple example. Assets, liabilities, equity. What the company owns and how it was financed or who has a claim to it. Financed by liabilities or owner investment. And you might look at that and say, oh my gosh, there's a whole lot of information on there. I uh, don't know that I'll ever be able to understand it. You will. We're in week one or two of accounting right now. Okay. And so what we're going to be doing throughout the entire time we're together is learning what these different accounts are, what they mean, and how to get the numbers into them. You'll notice on the balance sheet, our total assets are equal to the total liabilities and stockholders equity. The numbers are the same. They're equal. That's the accounting equation. You may have read about it or heard about it in the videos already. We'll be spending a lot of time talking about the accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. How about Nike? Here's Nike's balance sheet. Again, you can see assets equal liabilities and equity. You can see the assets listed there, what Nike owns, the liabilities, and the equity. Who has a claim to it? All right, finally, our statement of cash flows. The one financial statement that we're not going to do a whole lot with right now. We'll get into it maybe later on in our time together, maybe in accounting 11 or two. But right now, all you really need to know about the statement of cash flows, it shows how the cash balance changes from one period to the next. The cash balance on the balance sheet goes up, it goes down. This shows you where those dollars came from and where they went, dollars in and dollars out. So, all that being said, here's Nike's cash flow statement. You can see we begin looking at the cash provided by the day-to-day -day operations. You can see the cash provided by the investing activities or used up by the investing activities and the financing activities. Cash at the beginning of the year, cash went up or down, we get the cash at the end of the year right there at the end of the cash flow statement. So our takeaways, income statement, it tells us whether or not the business made a profit. And that statement is always going to be for a period of time. Did we make a profit during the month, the quarter, the year? We need that net income or net loss number to do the statement of shareholders equity. How did the owner's equity or stockholders equity change over the period, whether it be the month, the quarter or the year. Then we had the balance sheet. What did the business own? Assets and who had a claim to it? Liabilities plus equity. That report is always a specific point in time. It's the end of the month, the end of the quarter, the end of the year, as of one date, not a period of time. Then finally, our statement of cash flows. How did cash go up or down during the period? Again, we're dealing with a period of time. All the financial statements, all four of them, are connected. Here's how they're connected. As I mentioned, the income statement, we got to do that first. We got to get that net income to flow down into the statement of owner's equity. The ending balance and the statement of equity goes down to the balance sheet under equity. The ending cash balance flows into the statement of cash flows and is proven by the statement of cash flows. So all these are connected, the financial statements. So we got to do them in the order that we need to do them in. We got to learn how to do them. We got to learn everything that's in them. We got a lot of work to do, y'all. I will be here every step of the way as we complete that work. If you run into problems, feel free. Please feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to talk accounting with anybody, anytime, anywhere. All right. Until next video, take care, everybody.